October 2022 is a huge breakdown of boundaries of things holding you back. It's likely going to be a very memorable month for you looking back in years to come. Personal growth everywhere and also a lot going on underneath the surface as well as in real life physically. If you're excited to see what's coming up for you this October 2022, make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you are always up to date with what the stars have in store for you. Hi, I'm Erin. I'm an astrologer, and in this video, I'm using the tropical zodiac within whole sign houses as I practice mainly Hellenistic Greek astrology. So this whole month, Saturn in your fourth house will be squaring Uranus in your seventh house. So in the background, there's this maturity and responsibility that you're having to implement in your home or family life that's going up against some chaos from a romantic partner. So the person that you're in a romantic relationship with might be causing a lot of issues because of their chaos, and you're trying to hold it together and really be grounding for the family unit at the same time. So from the first to the third, Mercury in your 11th house is opposing Neptune in your fifth house, showing that communicating with friends might be made difficult due to lack of clarity or dishonesty with a partner, specifically around a creative project. You could find that it's difficult communicating with others because of clarity on a one-on-one -on -one basis with the creative details or the person that you're dating who needs to give you the information to tell this larger group of people. On the first, however, Venus in your 12th house is opposing Jupiter in your 6th house, showing that your physical health and mental health are going really well. There's a ton of improvements and a lot of priority on your spirituality, on your internal world, and on your health physically as a result as well. That's going really well beginning of the month. And on the second, Mercury is stationing direct in your 11th house. So Mercury retrograde was showing some difficulty or some uh, miscommunications around groups, friends, and networking. And now with Mercury direct, you're more able to communicate clearly and precisely with people that you're in large groups with. On the 6th to the 7th, Mercury in your 11th house will try and Pluto in your 3rd house. So people that you're speaking with in larger groups are helping you be really focused around your routine tasks and content. Like you're getting a lot of support that motivates you to be more consistent or more focused with how you're writing and doing things around content. On the 9th, there's then a full moon in your Aries 6th house. Full moons are periods of energetic release. There are times of letting go or celebrating. And thankfully, this full moon is really beautiful. And for you, it's in your sixth house of physical health, usually physical health issues or maintenance that we don't really wanna do or coworkers. So you could be celebrating something at the office. You could also be realizing that you've ended a difficult chapter in your health and you're now celebrating your improvements. Then from the 9th to the 15th, Mars in your eighth house will be scoring Neptune in your fifth house. So you're putting a lot of effort into managing your finances right now. You're looking to build them, your investment portfolio, and get a lot done for the future. But someone that you're dating or a creative project is not giving you all the information and it's leading to a lack of clarity and difficulty managing your money because you don't know what this other person is doing and you're having to depend on them. On the 11th, a lot of things begin moving into your 12th house of internal mental health and spirituality. So it's a little bit of a more internal middle of the month, but Mercury enters your 12th house. So speaking about or working on community communicating your mental health is probably going to pick up. Then from the 11th to the 14th, the sun and Venus in your 12th house are trying Saturn in your fourth house. Looks like your family and your living situation is supporting your mental health a lot. Then from the 17th to the 19th, the sun and Venus are trying Mars in your eighth house. So your financial journey of working really hard is making you feel better and your mental health is also allowing you to be more upfront and work hard with your finances. From the 19th to the 26th, the sun and Venus are conjunct in Libra and then they move into your Scorpio first house, which is when the spotlight becomes a little bit more on you. But during that time from the 19th to the 20th, they will square Pluto in your third house. So watch out for feeling like you are being manipulated or struggling with someone that you see on a daily basis, like a sibling or a neighbor, that you're trying to just hold it together and be mentally sane. You don't need that drama. But from the 23rd onward, the Sun and Venus enter your Scorpio fifth house, showing that there's a ton more spotlight on you to finish off the month. Venus in the first house shows more attractiveness and more harmony, and the Sun there shows more attention, so a lot more positive attention coming your way. And on the 25th, there is a solar eclipse in your first house. Now, solar eclipses are large-scale new beginnings that take place over the next six months, but are being catalyzed right now, and they occur on the 25th of this month for you. And solar eclipses eclipses are new beginnings, but this one is on the south node, which represents a new beginning of letting go. So it might be that you let go of an aspect of your identity or even your physicality and the way that you look. And there's some new uh, aesthetic or creative or value-based change that you're making to your character or your appearance overall. On the 28th, Jupiter retrograde re-enters your Pisces fifth house. 
So it's likely that you might be going back to a romantic relationship or going back to a creative project that you started at the beginning of the year but then left. So that's becoming a major priority for you. And on the 30th, Mercury enters your first house. Even more communication and more spotlight on you basically with another planet there. And finally on the 30th, Mars stations retrograde in your 8th house. So Mars in the 8th house is showing action, aggression, and conflict regarding shared finances and getting things done in your investing journey. And with it going retrograde, it's likely going to be a time of reconsidering or rethinking what that is and having to backtrack or reverse course. So if you have any thoughts, any predictions, or anything you want to share about what's coming up for you this month, feel free to leave that down below. We'd love to hear from you in the comments. The tarot card that we have for Scorpio Risings is the Queen of Pentacles. Now, Pentacles are all about material support like money, food, property, housing, and the Queen is the provider and the emotional entry into that. So looking at what your emotional relationship is to abundance, to money, to worth, could be a big topic for this month as you examine your mental health and also seem to be attracting a lot. It's a very abundant month. I hope that a lot of this is welcome news or fits in with your plans for this October already. If you haven't already, I would love to have you subscribe. I see a lot of you have not subscribed yet, and I would love to have you join the, um, I think we agreed on marinara sauce as our name. I don't know. I'm okay with it if you're okay with it. Anyway, take care, and I will see you in the next one. Oh, there is one.